All right, great. Uh, today we're joined by Takar uh, with Vintage Drip. Um, no, Mr. Deadstock. Yes, Mr. Deadstock at Vintage and Rare Drip. Vintage Drip Gods. Is the IG tag. There you go. So which name do you prefer? Mr. Deadstock or Vintage Drip? When I when people see me at events, they refer to me um, all different type of ways. I'm comfortable, you know, with all of them. It's, uh, you know, mainly the preference of the person and uh, off relationship base, you know, how they refer to me. I'm cool yeah. with it all. Yeah. So if you're one of the things that kind of gravitated me towards wanting to talk to you was your energy. Um, and a lot of, on a lot of your posts I see, and I'm going to share my screen on a lot of your posts. I see that you're always, uh, you're always smiling. Yes. Um, so can you, you know, how, how, is that like the way that you conduct yourself in business? Kind of, can you talk a little bit more about that? It's definitely, um, you know, the way that I conduct myself in business is the way that I conduct myself in life, you know, trying to be, um, the component or the person that brings the positive energy, you know, to the room, to the, uh, to the meeting, to the circle, you know, to the event, wherever I'm coming, I'm trying to make sure that, you know, I have my mind set straight on, uh, you know, business and having my positive energy basically, um, just leak from my pores, you know? So, um, I attract other people who are positive, and I'm able to get my job done and best as I can with that energy. God. And when you, um, can you tell us a little bit more about like, you know, where you sell, um, you know, a little bit about how you got started. Um, and if you could just elaborate on that. I would love to talk about how I got started. That may take up the whole dang on <laughs> thing. <laughs> but um, yeah. When I've met um, when I've met other sellers, I um, that was something I've relaxed on it for a while because it's so long, you know, my story on how I got started. But um, this is something that I'm passionate about. You know, this is how I'm able to dig deep and get this positive energy, even when we show up to a show and it's a rainy day. And you know, what I mean, there's other variables of things that may be going against me. How I keep the positiveness is because I have a true passion for this, a, you know, a love, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I, I, one of the things that I see on your, on your page is obviously Mr. Deadstock is in the name, but a lot of the, the merchandise that you sell is, is literally Deadstock. So it's a lot of older stuff, um, a lot of cool jackets. I saw the Jeff Hamilton jackets um, and, you know, obviously that stuff's hard to get. So, you know, you're obviously somebody that can, source things that are hard to get i'm not gonna get ask you well how do you do it because you know obviously you know that's i love around. that question yeah I, I love that question he would say how do you get it yeah i'll be like i, I yeah. get tired of hearing it sometimes because you know you can't just give people the you know the no. secret recipe on how you make your gumbo so it's an entertaining question for people that ask but i found a way to answer it you know for people and um the reality is if you want people to, this stuff doesn't come out of where you can see it. It's hard to find. So yeah. it isn't in any stores. It isn't on any shelves. It isn't on eBay for the snipers. It isn't nowhere where you can see it with your eyes, really, you know? So in order to get things that, you know, are hard to find and see as these things that I have, it's about being a people person and about having the true positive energy and also about having cash on deck because no matter how nice you are, they're not going to let you in their home, their business, or their warehouse if you don't have any money to buy. So you definitely have to have show your buying power, have to show your muscles with your buying power, you know, but you also have to have a personality that is genuine, that people can attach to and, you know, and love, you know what I mean? They have to really know that it's really you, you know? And that's how you get into people's basements and people's houses and people's warehouses that normal customers or normal people aren't allowed in. 
That's how you really do it. So there is no thing like here's the directions. You go left, right, left, right. And then you got the gold mine of inventory. You'll get everything dead stock. It isn't like that. It's yeah. more so about, you know, like if someone were to um, become a uh, NBA Hall of Famer, you know, or the top basketball player, here's going to tell you, work on your dunk every day. Do the crossover and the dunk. No, he know it's about the repetition. It's about so many different variables involved, you know, and some of the most important variables would have to be the love and the dedication and the desire. Because what else would make you go through such adversity to accomplish your goals? What else would help you persevere through the no's and the closed doors and the times when, you know, it's hard? What would make you be able to go through this? You have to have the genuine love, passion, and positive energy. And when you run around with that, letting them know that you want whatever you want, you'll be able to get it in life, I think, you know? Yeah, you know, I really love that message overall. Um, you're right. You know, that's why there are countless of videos of uh, even on YouTube and personalities of those pushing others to, um, you know, do what they do, right? Like real estate, you know, whatever it is, selling cars, selling homes, yes. uh, just those entrepreneurs. But you're right. You know, he can show you as many things or they can show you as many things as possible. But there's a lot of other skills that are more, um, come within the person, you know, the ability to be disciplined, the ability to, um, you know, grind and put yes. in those extra hours and put in that extra effort to go the extra mile. Are you willing to sacrifice your, you know, a lot of things that other people are not? Are you willing to speak? Are you okay to going outside of your comfort zone? Yes. Um, you know, are you willing to, you know, do things that you may not like to do all the time? So those are the types of Important. things that will, yeah, those are the types of things that will put you on the next level. Uh, which, in my opinion, just by looking at your page and just talking to you, I, I, I can sense that, you know, like you have everything in regards to what will make a person successful in business. You know, you have the attitude, you have the skills and, you know, you have the knowledge um, of understanding the different merch that what's 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 wanted. Right. So you also have that street, that street uh, smart where you understand, like, OK, what's hot, what's not. Um, and that's, that's, that's great. That's great to that see. It makes me feel good inside that, uh, that ability to know what people want before they even want it. Oh yeah. I don't want to interrupt you. No, no, the, no, you know, no, you're good. You can elaborate on that. If you, you yes. know, a, a little bit about, um, you know, I'm, I'm in the meantime, I'm trying to, um, add another zoom so I can, I want to share my screen. I'm having difficulties with my first laptop, but I'll, I'll be able to share it. But if, uh, in the meantime, if you don't mind talking a little bit about, that knack that you have, kind of that ability to kind of de detect where um, style or where the market is going. Yes, yes. You know, that's something that is a, a true skill when, um, you know, when you have those high 90 day um, eBay totals and stuff, you know, when you, um, when you do, when you have wonderful performance at shows time and time again, you leave with um, just a good feeling and the feeling of, it's almost like if someone's sick, <laughs> it's almost like if someone's sick knowing what herbs or what to give them to, you know, to heal them, make them feel better, you know? Um, when someone wants, uh, when someone wants clothing and someone wants to, you know, look a certain, someone wants to look a certain way and have a certain um, attitude, a certain feeling, because this is sometimes, this is what dress and clothing does for us. You know, it can give us a, a feeling, you know, it can give us a, a aura, a you know, help us. Oh, I feel extra businessman like today, ready to handle my goals. You throw the car hard on, I'm ready to dig holes. You know, I, I throw my Luther Vandross shirt on or my Diana Ross. I'm ready to go to a, a dinner with a, a girlfriend or son, you know? So um, these, these articles of clothing, you know, do different things for us, you know? So like I said, the person who is sick, knowing what they need to get better, that person is, is feels wonderful about that, you know? And when someone wants clothing items and they don't really have that direction or know exactly what they want and they come into my, my store, my vendor booth, they come in and uh, I um, have what they want and they leave 
smiling and happy and elated, and I may even get a conversation or a sh or a post share later about I wore this to dinner and everyone was asking me about it. Like that stuff still means a lot to me, you know. I know a lot of the big people they don't, you know, people that are my friends and I rub shoulders with the Mr. Throwbacks and uh, all the, you know, these guys, you know, that you see me selling stuff too. Yeah. You know, yes. I, I, I am, We're you know, sharing I, screen. you know, I am, I am sharing the, um, I am sharing the, um, your Instagram page. Is that what you yes. can see? So I'm sharing, I'm sharing your Instagram page just to kind of show a little bit more about, you know, what is something that I, you know, all these cool things that I'm seeing on here, all these cool jackets, Yes. Um, you know, this Holyfield and Tyson is very cool. But see, that's what I was talking about. I can sense the energy um, yeah. through those pictures. And obviously, <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars in the background with all this merch. Yes. Very cool, right? Very cool to see. Yes. A lot of these things are like, you know, it, it's very, it's, this stuff is hard to find as it is, right? But yes, in mint condition or in dead stock condition is even harder to find. Um, and that goes back to what you were talking about earlier of having those additional skills, of having that additional um, ability to kind of maneuver around the people's um, talking about talking to people and kind of understanding um, how to get in, how to get into that next step, how to go in their basement, how to get them to sell the stuff that's not for sale. Yes. Right? Because people have sometimes have estate sales, have sometimes they have yard sales. And, you know, what you see is what, what you can buy. But some some buyers are able to kind of get the the sellers to sell them stuff that's not even outside or stuff yeah. that they're not even trying to sell, right? So asking those questions and 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 do, going that extra step is definitely um, you know something that you've that you've um, that you've mastered. Um, as far as selling is concerned, um, can you talk ab about a little bit about um, you know? What are the avenues or in, in where do you sell? Do you sell online? Do you sell like flea markets or, or do you have a store or can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. I started off with, um, so I've been doing uh, vintage for probably like over, over, over 10 years and uh, under 15, over 10 and collecting vintage. And I really just started selling it probably about uh, six, you know, years ago on trying to sell it every way that I could, you know? Cause when I first got introduced to vintage, here we are again, right? On how I sell. We're back to my favorite question that's real long. We kind of try to dance away from it, but here we go. So I was, um, I first started selling to um, Flight Club, number one. Are you familiar? Flight Club. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a store in Los Angeles, I believe. Yes, but it first started in New York City. So not many people are familiar with Flight Club number two. Flight Club number two is the vintage store, not the sneaker store. This is New York. What I'm going to give is basically my history ties in almost to some of the New York, you know, I latched on to New York vintage history. So I just, when I got started in the game, I was um, buying sneakers. It was before the Jordan craze. It was before there was lines for Jordans. This is when I first started buying sneakers and that had to be maybe, I don't know, 2015, maybe a year before or something like that. And um, I, I was buying four pair of sneakers, four or five pair of sneakers, Jordan ones. And I was talking to the gentleman at the store, the salesman, and I'm letting him know it's not a Foot Locker chain or a big chain. This is just some, you know, individuals who have a business and who have got the Nike contract. I told them, I said, uh, I need, I'm buying four or five pairs of sneakers right now. Not every day does someone come in buying four or five pairs of sneakers of the same type. I need you to look out and take some extra, you know, care, consideration for me since I'm making this level of purchase. And he said they were already on clearance. This was before the Nike craze. They, when they were already on clearance, they were Jordan 1s, about $45, $50. I got them to go down to $30, $35. I took these sneakers to Flight Club 1 in New York City, and they put them on for consignment. 
This is the first time I've ever was about to sell any type of clothing items. They put them on for consignment. And I spent 30 $35 initially for these sneakers. And these sneakers I was given, I looked on Flight Club and I seen them selling them for $150. And I don't remember the percentages that they were doing at that point in time, but I probably got $120 or something like that off of that $30 investment. And I was sold. There was no going back for me at that point in time. I was I was sold on it. So at that point in time, I was not even living in New York City, coming all the way from uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. I was bringing car load of, uh, you know, releases to Flight Club One. I was bringing so many releases that a young gentleman named Ralph Lawrence, you know, may he rest in peace. May he rest in power and paradise, you know. This was a young Asian gentleman who I guess had, um, who was in part of Flight Club at the ground when they were first being built and established. Because remember, there was a Flight Club one before there was ever Flight Club in LA. There was Flight Club in New York and there was Flight Club two around the corner from Flight Club one on Green Street. And this is something that these young guys, you know, from New York, I'm not, I don't know everything about it, how Flight Club was established, you know, but he's somebody that was there at the beginning. And these people used to let me cut the line that they liked, I took, they took such a liking to me. They used to let me cut the line. There'd be 50 people in line to come drop sneakers off and get their money. They used to look out for me and let me cut the line. And, um, Ralph Lawrence, he was one of the guys that I believe they told me to go around the corner. They said, man, you know about Vintage? You ever been to Flight Club too? I said, no, nah, man, what's that? What you talking about? He said, man, go around the corner. Flight Club 2. Love it there. It's crazy. I went in there and I was mesmerized. I looked around and I seen Black Bart Simpson, seen Black Mickey Mouse. I seen Baby Got Back shirts and Coca-Cola shirts and shirts that my parents would never let me wear when I was a child. I would drive by, ah, I get that, and zoom. They won't even pay me no attention because the stuff on the shirt was so, you know, at that time, it was just like they weren't, my parents weren't going to, you know, advocate for me having Baby Got Back shirts or you know Bart Simpson saying something crazy or something like that so I you know as a child I fell in love with this stuff and hadn't seen the stuff until they said hey go around the corner you'll love it there so I go to flight club too I see all this stuff on the walls I'm like man my grandmother and my mother went to the thrift store in the flea market you know and um I know that I can get this stuff at the Salvation Army. I know I could get this stuff at the Goodwill. I know I could find this stuff at flea markets, you know? So that's when I went, I started my hunt. I started, I went to the thrift stores in those places in Springfield, Massachusetts, where I was residing at the time. And I came back to Flight Club too with two big bags of inventory, you know? And they went into the bags and they pulled a, a shirt out and they busted out laughing at me, almost fell on the floor. Hey, it was a bugle boy shirt. They said, man, this all this stuff that you got. They said, if you don't own this stuff, then you need to basically just not even mess around with it. We had someone pay $4,000 from their savings trying to get these vintage items that we sell in this store. They wasted all their money. So if you don't have this shit in your closet already, I can say the, the S word. Yeah, well, you could, you could say whatever yeah. you want, man. So yeah. they told me, if you don't <laughs> have this shit in your closet already, yeah. then don't even try it. You'll waste your money. And I looked at them, said that. I looked at that as like a, a challenge. You got a chip on your shoulder. A challenge slash insult. I wasn't going to let them get away with that. You know, I came up there and obviously wasted all my money that day. Wasted gasoline. I brung bags of stuff that no one would really want, you know? And um, they sent me a package. But I looked around before I left. 
and they didn't deter me because I'm not really a person that once you, you know, if you're a person that can be deterred from your goals, then you just need to go. This ain't a business for you. Selling vintage clothing, reselling, retail arbitrage, sneaker reselling, just get out of it. If you're going to let hurdles, obstacles, and things deter you from your goal. So these guys, these gentlemen that ended up being good friends, you know, of mine, being my goddamn, uh, you know, they, they were like my chaperones. They, they, these guys taught me about vintage clothing because they laughed at me when I brought things that were not desirable in the vintage market. Had no one else to show me about this. So when I come back, when I left with the challenge slash insult, you know what I mean? Um, you know, so I come back and I'm bringing two bags or three bags this time. And they, they, they have to take two, three shirts. I found something that they actually want. So they couldn't really laugh at me like that. But I still had to use my forearms and bring bags back to the car, you know? And I looked around that store good as I could and I asked them questions. Well, what actually do you want? What actually are you interested in, you know? And I basically, um, through going back and forth to Flight Club 2, I was taught about I was taught about uh, the, these Ralph Lawrence and another uh, gentleman, uh, a black, a young black man. He, uh, they taught me about vintage clothing. These guys, you know, these guys that laughed at me when I brought my first box. So because of them, I will always, you know, sell to stores, you know, because I was a store myself until I decided that, you know, it's so much fun not having thousands of dollars of overhead. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, so basically, um, you know, uh, I love to sell to stores. So if you're a store and you see this, you can hit my Instagram up. And I have everything from true vintage to the hip hop vintage, every really type of, you know, the vintage that there is. Stuff that I've never, that I've never even posted. If you ask me for it, I'll send you pictures of it because I have it, because those young gentlemen at Flight Club 2, they schooled me into true vintage because understand they're in Manhattan, New York, you know? So that's kind of like- Cream my, of the crop. Yeah, you know? So a lot of people can't really say where their vintage knowledge came from. Oh, I learned what was cool on eBay. I learned what people do on Depop. I learned what people do on, there's a secret society of vintage people before all, before D Depop existed, mm -hmm. before people were selling stuff on, before Instagram existed mm -hmm. and Facebook existed. These were the gentlemen that were meeting up, you know, and with, the, with, with low lifes and, and, and the polo vintage culture. This stuff existed before the internet. So vintage collecting and the resources in this brother, this like secret society, almost it really is, you know, it has existed and it's been around for quite some time. And I'm blessed to go to Flight Club and, you know, meet Ralph Lawrence and the other gentlemen that were there really was blessed. They really showed me A to Z. And no matter where I go in this vintage world, you know, um, I'm able to, I'm able to like, I'm never a dummy, you know? Yeah. You know, and they taught me, they yeah, taught me. Yeah. The, the, that's, that's a fascinating story with you and flight club. Um, just talking about you, you mentioning how um, this vintage game goes back beyond, you know, the Instagram, the Depop and, and just kind of like social media in general, um, a little bit of background on how I kind of learned about vintage I was five or, or like six, seven. And I was going with, to my dad. I mean, he would always take me to yard sales. I used to hate I love, it. When I, I love I, how it started. Well, I used to hate it. But I, when I was a kid, I was like, ah, oh, dang, five in the morning or whatever. Anyhow, one time he bought some Levi's and, you know, he bought them because he used to sell at the regular flea market. This is before he knew anything about vintage. So he used to just sell, you know, jeans for 20 bucks, 30 bucks, whatever. Anyhow, he bought some Levi's and then some guy comes up to him and he, he's like shaking. Hey, 
sell me those jeans, sell me those jeans. And my dad's like, no, no, no. Like I, they're mine. They're mine. And he's like, come on, how much do you want? And he pulled out a stack of hundreds. He's like, how much do you want? And my dad's like, freaking like not trying to like not show his face or you know have his poker face on but he basically said just shot out a number i believe he said give me 500 bucks the guy he said for both or for each he's like each the guy gave him a thousand dollars you gotta think quick at those times yeah 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 yeah. but the guy (laughs) gave him the guy gave him a thousand dollars for two pairs of jeans like before he even got like basically to the car right so that was like a that was that was a spark uh ignited my dad to understand like wait a minute what is this Levi stuff? That guy ended up selling. Then they became like some of the best friends in the world, you know, years later becoming yes. friends. But basically like that's how he learned about the red line, the salvage, you know, back yeah. in the day, the big E's. Like I, I believe he made a lot more money than 500 bucks. But for someone who doesn't know, right, what they don't know. And then they're like, hey, I'll give you 500 bucks for that. It's like, wait, what? Okay, sure. And then he realized later, oh my gosh, those were like 5000 $6,000. Um, and this was in the nineties. Right. So it was, it, the craze was then, but that was kind of like, it's, it, it goes through like peaks and valleys. Right. So like it goes really high and then it go drops. Like right now I would say that overall it was really crazy in the, in the pandemic slash COVID, like people had all that extra money. Um, and, and then it kind of went down and right now it's kind of in the middle, but the good stuff still sells, right? Like yes. people are still looking for the good stuff. Um, you know, people are not buying necessarily the mid stuff. People are still buying the great stuff. Um, yes. and, 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 you know, it, it, it still holds its value um, for the most part, most of the stuff. Um, I, I know that in the last couple of years, there's been a lot, in, an increase. I don't know. I mean, pretty sure you go to Target or whatever, but there's been an increase of like replicas of like those, those vintage. Um, you basically, they copy all the 70s, 80s um, style shirts and you just, and then people don't really know. I hate it. Like, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I, I know people hate it. You know, those WrestleMania shirts. I have a lot of old vintage WrestleMania shirts, like real ones, right? Like eighties, 85s, WrestleMania three, WrestleMania four, you know, the, the old stuff. And then I go to like target and I see like, you know, Hulk Hogan and ultimate warrior. I'm just like, ah, oh, dang, it's like seven bucks. Like, but people still want the good stuff. Right. But I feel like that, that did kind of impact a little bit on like you know you saw it a lot on like the concert shirts you know all the reproduction metallica shirts i'm pretty sure those took a hit uh, but overall kind of the the all prints the mosquito all that stuff still like at the top of the game um i'm, I'm kind of all over the place so that's kind of how i started but you know i i i, I kind of go to estate sales and then I, I look with vintage right anything made in america i only sell on ebay though i mean locally I, i'll sell stuff on like let go but just like the bigger stuff, like, you know, like I've sold like, you know, like those little red wagons or whatever from yes. the 60s or 70s, you yes. know, stuff that I don't like to sell on eBay or like bikes or like. You ever get the skates or... that you put on your shoe? No, I've never sold any of that, but. You seen them? No. The skates that you put on your shoe? Are you talking about... the skates that we may have seen as children. They got skates that are for, for the gener- generations before us. And you just used to put your shoe on a metal thing that's like so dangerous so crazy like <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's crazy because like there i mean there's stuff right now that i remember the lawn darts uh those are banned on ebay right those like oh, I, I, it's, it's, there's a lot of things that have been banned over the yes um, that have that, been banned but you know you you kind of get to see how you know back in the day stuff was made for a certain audience and nowadays it's like more protections more like kid friendly um, yes. more washing out for the consumer and all that um yeah. You know, just vintage in general, I feel like I've always, even even though I only just do it for the side, on the side, um, you know, I, I also sell a lot of new stuff because it's easier to source for me just for fun. If I'm going to the store, if I'm, already gonna, if I'm already going to buy stuff for me, why not just look to stuff that I can make extra couple, you know, extra couple more money and then to basically get my stuff that I want for me for free, yes. basically. Um, but yeah, that's, that's very interesting overall. Like, you know, you, 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 you talked about also about the, the lessons learned, right? So, um, you went to the store, here you are excited with this bag of stuff that you thought, oh my gosh, I'm about to show these guys that I'm one of them and I can hang with them and you spend $4,000 and then they just laugh at your face. But, you know, you know, a lot of people pay, pay for college. Well, that was your learning moment. 
That was yes, your, yes. that was the moment where you were like, okay, um, instead of like giving up, you were resilient and you said, you know what, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna use this as an expensive lesson, but I'm gonna be better and I'm gonna come back and show them that I can hang. And now yeah. you are the supplier. So that's yeah, that's yeah. crazy. That's that's like a, hey, a whole guys, 360. Guys from there, like follow me, you know, like you know what I mean? So yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, it's it's crazy how people turn it around. I mean, I've seen a lot of people come and go. Um, I, I, you know, I've I've been doing this forever. I mean, since I was a kid, like I said. But the eBay, since I would say probably like four four years strong, where like I'm just kind of like not nonstop. I mean, I pay taxes and all that, and and, yes. and you know, pretty profitable and all that. But just in general, when it comes to um, the game i've seen a lot of people kind of ask before like in in the past i'm pretty sure people have asked you and you kind of show them little nuggets and then they try it and then like a couple months later they're doing something else on yeah, the next yeah. thing yeah that happens a lot right so you, yeah. you kind of get to see the new players and kind of the ogs kind of stick around and kind of like okay you know they weather the storm i know that right now a lot of sellers actually you know this whole recession and this whole unpredictable of the markets a lot of people are kind of on their way out but like you said having a strong bank account having the you know the resilience and having that ability to make those moves right now is probably the best time um to take advantage because people are kind of looking at the horizon and seeing oh my gosh it, it, there's a lot of uncertainty and in in those uncertain moments is when people like you that have the capital can make moves and yes. and take yourself to the next level in the capital, you know, that basically just, you know, comes from, uh, you know, my, my work ethic that I got my head down so much working that it's, you know, it's a good sound when your friends and your peers are like, man, your hustle is crazy. And they just, you know, got all of these ad libs and stuff like that for the way that you work. And you're like, you know, you don't want to, you know, you can't just, um, put it to the side when they say it you have to accept it and appreciate it that their acknowledgement of your work but you know they're like it's about work it's about you know that's how you get results that's the only thing that's going to give you results not what you think about something not the way you want something to be how much actual work that you put in with something you know so the capital comes from a place where i sell to stores i get bored i put my foot up you know what i mean and to start looking at stores an hour away if I want. It doesn't matter. Look and see, what do they need? They may have something that I like. They may have something in there. I may not get a whole ton of money selling inventory to them, you know? I may, um, because, all right, so I may not get a ton of, you know, uh, money selling to them, but they may have inventory, something that is going to make me extra lit for my customers, something that's going to highlight me and what I do. They may have one dead stock piece in that store that would just be a beautiful addition onto the only page on Instagram that has nothing but dead stock posts, which is my Instagram page. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, do you know? Do you know of another page that has? No, no, I, you know, I actually saw one of your stories the other day. You're like, you know, you're, you're very proud of that. And I thought that that was very, I, I like to see that because, you know, it's true. I haven't seen any it's other page. Hard not to be cocky. I, my no, no. I mean, Hey, you know what? You said it yourself. You worked very hard. Um, yes. And that's something that nobody can take away, right? So, yes. I mean, I, I, hey, you know what? I see your page and I'm like, damn. Like, when you took those pictures of all those jackets, those World Cup ones, I'm just like, this is incredible. Like, stuff like this. In, in the future, when people are looking at, like, the vintage era and kind of, like, you know, hip-hop and, and kind of, like, pop culture of the 90s, of the, of the 2000s, and just kind of styles and and, and, and just what it is to be, um, you know, in, in our age bracket, you, stuff like that, like, is like almost museum worthy, you know, yes. like, like yeah. that stuff. And you have it in pristine condition. It's dead stock. Yeah. Um, so for people who don't know, dead stock means unworn, brand new with tags. Yes. I, you, and you know, I have to have a type of OCD to keep this stuff like this. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's actually, yeah, you're right. Because look, sometimes I get new stuff, right? Like I get new stuff from like a year ago and it's like, oh, I got to dust it off, you know, like, but obviously you, you know, you, you have a regimen, you know, that, that works for you. And, in, in, you know, and it's, it's something that is, it's within you. I can tell by speaking with you and by, um, you know, just interacting with you this, this past, like, you know, 30 minutes or however long I've been talking to you, um, that you have a lot of energy inside and you're also transmitting a lot of power. Um, you, you are very, um, you know, you know, what's good in your business and you're also very resilient. And that's something that's admirable from afar, right? It's because, you know, I see, and it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you're, uh, in, in what field you're in. Um, those are the types of traits that, that people can look up to and see, Hey, I may not be a vintage seller, right. But I want that attitude and that ability to kind of rebound and be able to kind of look at what doesn't work and, and, and never giving up. Right. So, yes. and, and, and just always chasing, it doesn't matter where you're at, always chasing that next, um, the next high, the next, yes. the next big thing, the next, um, thing that's going to make, take you to the next level. Um, what do you, where do you see yourself, um, you know, moving towards in the future? Like, where do you see yourself in like two years, five years? Where do you see your business and kind of your vision for that? Where do you see on that? I would have to, um, I love that question. And I would have to, um, sit, talk about next month before I go to two years, <laughs> because we're talking about, we just went to the, the work ethic, you know, yeah. uh, topic. So, um, on December 11th, I'm currently in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania right now, you know, live from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So um, on the 11th, I will be in L.A. at ThriftCon. And on the 16th, I will be visiting vintage vintage um internet personalities in pittsburgh on the 16th and maybe stopping at a store out there on the way up to a show in ohio and ohio was supposed to be for two days this is how you gotta work guys for anybody for the people that's gonna be watching this is how you gotta work guys all right the 11th la the 16th pittsburgh the 17th ohio the 18th, I'm supposed to be in Ohio too. But some young gentlemen that throw a wonderful show in New Jersey and have taken a liking to me, and I've taken a big liking to them. They are basketball players with, um, you know, like business majors, you know what I mean? So they have a nice thing set up there in New Jersey at a nice place. Biz, they got people that... um. Yeah, teeth whitening at one of the vintage events. You can get your hair cut and your teeth whitening in, in the middle of the area away from the clothes. So they are young businessmen. And um, and ThriftCon used the same place that they used, you know? So ThriftCon, their first time that they came to Philly, ThriftCon copied the place that they thought was best to throw their events. So these young gentlemen have some, you know, intelligence with them. They have something going with them. And they have, uh, you know, took a liking to me and I took a liking to them. And they motherfucking put my face on the flyer without even asking me, man. And I, so I have to go. You understand me, bro? <laughs> because You're the they, this, this, that's the type of person that I am. You know what I mean? They, they mess with me. I mess with them. They have put me on the flyer before. They did it again, even though. I have prior engagements that are supposed to, you know, make it so I can't facilitate this move. I am pulling together my resources and my connections to have one of my good friends that I can trust man the station on the on the 18th so I can be in New Jersey also. So you have to work that hard if you want you know, results. I'm stretching and out, you know, what maybe we have an interview later. I tell you exactly how it went because 
you know, the Jersey show, I've had, I've had very good, um, it's not a thrift con, but I've had very good results at that show. Surprising results at that show. I did their event multiple times, you know? And um, I don't know about the Ohio show. The people that throw it, they said, hey, it's two days. I get about, you know, a, 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 um, he said, I get about a few grand. Like, you know what I mean? Like two or three grand in three days. So I'm like, all right. I know that I and more diversified than most sellers. So if somebody who just sells t-shirts and some hats and five sneakers, or 10, 20 sneakers, you feel me? If they just, if their strength is t-shirts, then if they are trying to make three, then I could probably go there and make five or at least four. You know what I mean? Or 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 have no problem making the three. I can make the three and meet all of the vendors dang near. You know what I mean? Because the vintage game is bigger than the t-shirt. You know what I mean? So, um, networking, so yeah. networking. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to go to this event and they said three grand for two days and I'm going to do one day and I'm going to still have inventory and people selling for me on the second day. But the guys that took a liking to me and put me on the cover of their event and have done it again, I can't play around with them. You got to. You got to like who like you, you know? Yeah, you know I mean, so as for, you know, if you have a, an event or if you have a situation where you think like the people are individual, individualizing the attention or they're taking special attention to you or what you're doing, then you better give those people more attention, even if they are a smaller venue. That's the way that it has to go, you know? That's like common sense. That would be like me chasing the beautiful woman that doesn't even look my way, opposed to having a you know good looking person that acknowledges me or whatever. You know what I mean? That that's the reality in the world. You know, some people chasing a you know what I mean a dream. You could chase a dream or you could chase a reality. Yeah, well, it looks I, like uh, it looks like a lot of doors are opening for you um, overall, and I think that. It, it, you know, like a lot of people will see that and say, how can they get to that level of being that face on that cover or being that face of the of the show? But it, 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 it's, years, drip it's, gods? It, it's years in the making. Vintage of drip gods is something <laughs> that I would like to share. That's why it's a Z <laughs> on the end of the word. People be trying to figure out what do you want to be called and why is it like this? You call your mother, tell her that I'm on an interview. Um, Yes, they, they ask me, they say, how can you get like, um, no, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Vintage Drip Gods, it's a, um, it's some slang in there. As for the Z, it's really, you know, the Z takes the place of the S and makes it like it's plural, you know? And um, I am somebody from the hip hop culture, the hip hop generation. And in hip hop, when you're good at anything, you become the god of it. God of rap, the god of basketball, whatever. That's what they, that's the hip hop references. That's the way hip hop people speak. That's the way this generation speaks. And, and the generations who have been, um, you know, um, basically taught by the hip hop generation. So vintage drip gods is something where there's only two other individuals who one is more of a, a car seller. <laughs> He's my business partner working on a, um, a, a car lot. And I have another business partner who has a bunch of vending machines <laughs> everywhere. These guys are people who buy clothing off of me for they self. These are guys who, if I'm, they believe in me and what I'm doing. And they'll invest if they need to. And the vintage drip gods right now is only me and these other two individuals who don't even have Instagrams about selling clothing, you know? But they, I want it to be bigger, you know? I want it to be uh, almost a brotherhood, vintage drip gods, where we put together our resources. I'm an individual who, if you know me personally, I don't really care about keeping tight some place that I get this vintage dead stock stuff from. 
There's only so much stuff that that person can sell to us. There's only so much cash that we can allot together to buy it. And there's only so much time that we are allowed to purchase it. But someone else may find about it and get it or, you know, so uh, you can't be overwhelmed with what you can't do. Some people get a connection and they want to hold it so yeah. tight and not share it with anybody. And in reality, they're not going to get the most and the best from that resource or connection. That's not positive energy. If you will get a good, if you get a water well and you hide it and go like this and let people go thirsty, that's not positive. That is negative. And these clothing pays people. So it's like water, you know? And yeah. if you're going to do that with a resource with people that are, if the person doesn't know you, well, you can't know where the water well's at. You might throw something in it and poison a water well. But if I know you, and you are somebody that's a friend in the circle, a vintage drip god, or somebody that's dear to me, somebody that I've even done business with time and time and time again. Well, shit, man, you got you can come down, man, and check this joint out. And I'm gonna extend. This is how you get these ill resources and connections and stuff like that. You know, it's it's a it's a bone in my body, or some blood that run through my vein that would make me extend a valuable resource to you. That's not something that I think people are just, everyone's, we're all born with it, but things happen in our lives. We might be raised by mean people, stingy people, who knows? And they get you to grow up and be like that. You know what I mean? But if how I got all this, how I amassed all of this stuff was not from being stingy. and was not from being negative. And I know the difference between positive and the things that are positive, the things that constitute what is positivity. You know what I mean? Like I said, if you had the access to a water well and you went like this over it and didn't tell thirsty people back at your village or you let people walk by you with thirst and you didn't say, here goes a cup, you never got to show them the water well. You can say, here goes a cup, no free of charge. If you're not doing good acts, then you're not going to have all the plugs and the connections and the resources that I have. You never, ever will. You know, there's no way that you could, I think. my That's my outlook on life because I'm an optimist and I'm a positive person and I'm a good person who wants to send good energy out there so other people can be good. You know what I mean? And become better people and know that, yeah, all this stuff, I didn't get this from being stingy, keeping this stuff secret or nothing like that, you know? When I go back to the warehouse um, with, uh, with with the rare Jeff connections and all this other stuff and the warehouse that I ha have access to in New England, I've offered, I've, I've brung people here. I've brung people there. I've told people where places are. And I think that, you know, and, and, if, and if we don't go that far, I at least want to give you a price that you can profit off of and show you the inventory because this we're in the business and it's about making money so you can't just give away you know your stuff has, still has to be sold at the end of the day so if you're not gonna you know if it isn't you want to do some type of giving you want to do some type of philanthropy you know what i mean that's big too that's big too always give kids up and at, at um, ThriftCon Vegas, I gave the janitors clothing. And I talked shit about how I know nobody ain't do nothing like that. There's some Latino people, you know, some older woman and man. Gave them clothing from my, that was dead stock, from my $5 pile. You know what I mean? So I'm not an evil guy that's going to say, if you're evil and you're stingy, and you're sneaking, you're still, you're going to win because I'm a righteous person. I'm a positive person, you know, and doing good and positivity is what got me to where I am at. And um, it's getting me further. It's helping me. It's helping me build momentum, you know, being positive, being an older, a older woman that I don't even remember from the Vegas show called me from her house. I didn't even remember giving her my number, but this is how you just have to be. You know, you have to give this positivity out. Um, she called me from her house, taking pictures of her clothing and jewelry and all this stuff from her house, saying that, you know, she having her son 
translate these messages for me. And she wants me to call her when she comes. You know, the, the, it's, there's new there's newspaper that none of the people that I buy stuff off of are black. The host, the, the people that got these big old, you know, that let me in their basements, the people that were store owners, the people that were warehouse owners. None of these people are black American people, you know, and the news propagates uh, to make people scared of black people. You know what I mean? Black yeah. men, you know, so understand how friendly, how much positivity has to be permeating through my pores for women, not just men, business owners, but for women to be trying to offer me in their homes to buy their old vintage antique stuff. So they can see it through my eyes, my skin, my smell, that I'm genuine, a good person. And if you can have that permeate through your pores, whoever the viewers or watchers are, then you too will have business owners let you in their homes, let you in their back warehouses, let you in their basements. And, you know, a lot of people, they asked me this when I was at the event. How do you get all this dead stock stuff or whatever like that? And, I, and, and you know, I basically, I told them I wasn't given the platform to articulate myself as much as I was with you, my friend, you know? But I basically let them know in a nutshell, you got to be a real person, a real good person. They got to be able to look in your eyes and see that you're good and you got to have the money on deck. Because they don't give a fuck if you're that nice, if you ain't got the money to buy and make their life better so they can pay their bill after they done spending time with you. Don't matter how nice you is. So you got to be real with this energy and you have to have your, 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 your money together. I love that. Don't waste people's times. You know, in order to make moves, you have to have capital and have the right attitude, right place, right time and be ready to strike. Um, that was an it hour. Is striking. You yeah. got it. I like the strike, you know? <laughs> exactly. You know, you know, an hour went by super quick and I'm pretty sure that we'll interact once more, once again in the future, you know, With I had better great, lighting. Yeah. With wait, better... I had a great time, um, getting to know you more. Uh, you know, I was, I was, I was, I'm blown away by your energy and just overall, I knew you had, you know, a lot of energy and your, your posts and all that. But getting to speak with you, I could see that you have a brilliant mindset um, and it's very inspiring. Um, and I'm pretty sure that, um, you know, you're a good mentor to many people around you and, and a, a positive influence. Um, I so thank I'll, you and appreciate that, you know, and, and commend you for having the ability to see all of that, you know, through the conversation, because no, you're not. You're, you're right. You're on point. Yeah. So, I mean, I truly appreciate it. I can see, uh, you know, I can see a. a I can see a lot by, by, by talking to you and I'm pretty sure we'll interact again, but for the, you know, until next time, I've had a great time. If there's anything else, I mean, I will be sharing your, um, I will be just putting this together and then sharing it on Instagram. I don't know if I'll put it on YouTube. I don't have a YouTube page, but I could probably create one. Uh, but I, I mostly just post on Instagram, but we'll talk again. I thank you for your time. You have a blessed I day. I would love I would love for some snippets to use. I have a website oh, yeah. that's going to be coming before my arrival in LA on December 11th. And I will be on the West Coast. So if you come up to me, buddy, I got a free dead stock item for you, man. Hey. You come shop with me for free, buddy. Hey, you know what? I'm in I'm I'm in Dallas, Texas. Um, but I will I I if I ever see you, I'm pretty sure I'll run into you somewhere, right? Uh, yes. but yeah, no, I will. I'll definitely send you the uh, when I post the whole clip. If uh, I'll I'll pick some clips where that are smaller and, more, and you know I can share with you some moments and then. Yes. Uh, but overall, feel free to use it. I'm I'm gonna yes. just compress this and then I'm gonna post it, and we'll go from there. But hey, I thank you for your time. I learned a lot from you. Um, thank and you for it, your time. thank you for your positive energy and good luck with everything that you're doing. Um, but you know, with person like you, it's not necessarily the luck because you know, it's, it's your skill set and it's your ability to make moves and your ability to keep going no matter what. So I appreciate you. Have a good one. Take care. Have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you. You also brother. Bye-bye. Peace.